The following is an encore presentation of new expressions. Past ten, go almost said it backwards, huh? <laughs> uh, from the planet Dyslexia. <laughs> it's six past ten on a uh, overcast Friday morning, but it is Friday, so it just you know just overcast everything else. And uh, yeah, we're getting off to an interesting start this morning. And I don't know where this is going to go, but I don't think we care, do we, Gregory? We're just going to have a fantastic time because we spend the new expressions hour every Friday morning bragging on Jesus and the kingdom and all things good. And uh, today is going to be absolutely no exception. Uh, because you know when we're bragging on the king and his kingdom and when we are when, when we're conspiring for the success of each other and each other's ministries we look more and more like the answer to Jesus last priestly prayer that we would be one as he father son spirit are one as we answer that prayer well according to the word of god the world will see and know that the father sent the son that looks to me like a great global harvest that's what i'm up for i don't know about you what he said <laughs> okay <laughs> So, I was waiting for you Boom. to breathe. I was waiting for you to breathe. Boom. He didn't take a breath there. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. Boom. We're starting off on a wacky Friday here. So awesome. So lovely to see you. Thank you for my coffee this morning. My I appreciate absolute it. Pleasure. man brings me a coffee every day. Always great to see your face. And the coffee. <laughs> yes. Now, on the screen, we've got a different face. Yeah, One that's familiar to you and I, but maybe not yeah. to everybody else. Yeah, first time. That's first right. Time. That's right. Finally, after years and years, and you know probation, I mean? yeah. years and years and years and years <laughs> yes. of pursuing the amazing Alicon family, we have Sarah Alicon joining us from Impact. Um, now, not Impact Church, but the Impact Ministry. And Sarah, welcome to New Expressions. Great to actually have you with us. Hello, welcome. To, oh my gosh, welcome to my office. I can see you guys on screen, which is really strange, obviously, because everyone else can't see us. They can hear us on radio, but yes. it is great to see you guys and I, connect I with you. No, no, hold on a minute, because I can't see your office. Can you see my ah. office, Evan? Can you it's, not see my office? It's like no, a typical you, workspace. You're blur. doing that whole virtual <laughs> yeah. blur thing yeah, so we blur. don't actually see, you know, the, the dressing gown hanging in the corner and the... <laughs> And, and Pete worded us up that you might be in your jammies as well. That's right. In your pajamas. He also said you had Legos and a big bowl of jello. What's all that about? <laughs> I have no idea. Well, My head tilted when he said that. I'm like, jello. I get the Lego uh, jello. I have no idea where he's going with that one. But, yeah, I do currently share uh, an office space with my uh, children's play area and <laughs> uh, my husband's video game space. And oh, that's just the, the common um, COVID situation, isn't it, where we all are working from home or just starting to get back into um, being with people again, I guess, and working that's in cool. real that's called real spaces. Con- that's called a construction site. That's what that's called. <laughs> Sharing yeah. space with your children. Construction. <laughs> Anything can happen. Or deconstruction. That's Indeed. right. That's right. That's right. Better have workplace insurance <laughs> installed there. <laughs> <laughs> but we were read that the, the riot act by Pete, who's our office manager. Of course, he's your hubby. We read that the riot act mm-hmm. when we first came in. He wouldn't let us in the studio until he listened to we listen to his list of demands. So we're, <laughs> we're on our P's and Q's, but the door is locked. So he can't actually get in. That's right. And we oh, he do, can't come in. That's right. And we do have workplace insurance here. <laughs> <laughs> so we're good. We're good. <laughs> so thanks a million for joining us. And I say, you know, it's been a while because, you know, you guys were on my radar for a conversation quite a while ago. Uh, you and your husband in Baptist circles, in youth ministry circles, and and uh, and, and actually being in that youth space for quite some time. And, mm. uh, and you know, of course, that... That, that, there's no end of the uh, the reach and the engagement and serving in schools and and in in uh, outreaches and so on. So that's that's your bread and butter. That space, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, we've been in youth ministry now for I think around twelve years. Um, and in lots of different spaces. So from, you know, local church youth leading, I'm still leading at my at my Baptist church every Friday night um, as a volunteer youth leader. Uh, but also, um, yeah, working for a long time in Youth for Christ on the Central Coast, working in schools and doing evangelism with young people. Um, yeah, and then most recently, for the past four years, I've been working for the Baptist Association uh, in the BYM team, which stands for Baptist Youth Ministries. Um, and yeah, working in the youth and young adult space there. So it's something I'm really passionate about is just working with young people and and young adults and just seeing them yeah grow and and thrive and know who they are and their place in the kingdom. 
It's so critical, Evan. Again, this is your bread and butter too. Mm. You know, like your great, great passion, un- identity in Christ, mm. um, connecting with young people, establishing them in God early, uh, and seeing them flourish into who they have always been destined to be. Um, mm. And and so, obviously, been involved in that space for a long time. How long have you been on the coast? Uh, so I was born and raised on the coast. So quite a uh, while. Oh. <laughs> yes, quite a while. Won't give away my wow. age. Um, but yeah, I was born and raised on the coast uh, in Wyoming, and um, yeah, then as an adult, I uh, travelled overseas for a bit, and then moved to Sydney, uh, where I met my husband Pete. Um, and then when we we're at that stage of like growing our family. We just really wanted to be uh, close to my family and to raise our kids with a bit more space. So we came back to the coast. Um, so we've been on the coast this second time around uh, for almost 15 years. So I got a question here with Pete because he told me an interesting story, an interesting story about how you guys met. You were uh, on duty or in service and you just ministering someplace. And as you were walking out, he was getting released. And that's how you guys met. <laughs> you shared a cab right on. Is that true? No. No. Okay. Sorry. No. So how did you guys meet? <laughs> so it wasn't at Long um, Bay. No. <laughs> oh, I can hear him hollering out in the front of y'all. <laughs> He's hollering from the front desk. Don't go in that room. <laughs> He's probably telling you to behave yourself. Um, no. Um, yeah, so Pete and I actually uh, met I pre-working in ministry. Um, I was working for a video game company, and so was he. And um, and we were friends for some time um, before we before we got together. But that was kind of uh, in the season of his life when he wasn't really following Jesus. And Sorry, um, it was the it was, people at my church who kind of brought him back to Jesus, which was cool. Yeah, what is, what does God. someone who works <laughs> for a video game company do? <laughs> so I worked... So before I worked with young people and worked with Jesus, I actually worked in finance. Um, okay. And so I worked in the finance side of um, finance and management side of um, of a video game company. And Pete worked in the marketing department. So, so does that mean you met. guys are, are gamers? You're into that sort of space or you were or you are? Or, yeah. Yeah, both. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because you guys are, you know, you, you, I mean, I often marvel how God matches couples up. You know, yeah. usually their strengths and weaknesses work with each other. Yeah. And yeah. these two right here, yeah, I mean, in that youth space, power couple. Yeah. So it's interesting, you, you both work in a video game, but yet to extremes, you're in finance, Pete works in a department where you put the helmets on and smash into each other. It's, just, <laughs> it's interesting. I mean, but once you come into the kingdom, man, does he draw those things and say, okay, you two together and over here i just marvel at that i do yeah yeah it's pretty amazing Mm. um and i i've really like um i found so many opportunities particularly now that i work less um in that one-on-one or every day with young people space and more about developing new ministries um uh, having all those skills like the finance and the management skills has actually come into play like mm. really it's really amazing how god does that where he's kind of like i'm going to use every little bit of your experience and your life to kind of propel you forward into what he has for you and that's certainly been our experience in life for pete and i um you know and he's using all of those extra tools that he has to he, now work at Rima with you guys well he's rearranged everything well he gets a new chair <laughs> yeah he needs a new chair that's right 15 minutes and he, he has a new chair not one but two <laughs> now, he's got two out there i don't know if you can see oh but this is the chair that i'm on and i've been on that oh, chair for atrocious. four years now oh and, uh, <laughs> the working conditions uh, here uh, oh, you know goodness. and oh, i hope we've got good representation because oh, oh my back oh oh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. Oh, he's going to pull this program if we're not <laughs> He can't pull the program. That's just entitlement. He can't, he can't pull the program. The he door's locked. Do that. So don't let him in. It's a sit-in. It's a sit-in. We're here. Oh. But seriously, the, the, the first two weeks Pete was here, he rearranged the whole front office. Everything was rearranged. Everything was moved. <laughs> and a new chair came. And a, yes. Yes. Anyway, Management anyway, skills. Anyway, oh my anyway, goodness! Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> so Sarah, you you um you you you're uh, working from home at the moment, and you've blurred your yeah. screen so we can't actually see the condition <laughs> of your work from home office. But your other office is in in um in uh, Macquarie Macquarie Park. Is that right? Yes. That, that's yeah, your that's real right. actual yeah. office, rather than when you're working from home. Explain yes. to us that. 
Yeah, so um, so I work for the Baptist Association of New South Wales and the ACT. So the association exists to to resource and support and provide, um, you know, frameworks for ministry for the local Baptist church. Um, and my role in uh, the youth and young adult space, um, I kind of sit in two spaces. Um, for the past four years, I've been the state youth camp director. So um, we have a really big youth camp that happens once a year um, in the September, October school holidays. Um, where we would have up to anywhere up to like 40 churches um, engaging, bringing their youth groups along. And that's a space that we provide for them to be part of a big combined event. So for the past few years, that's been my role, um, working for the the Baptist Association. Um, And in the past 12 months, that role's kind of been expanded and I've been developing a new program, which is the Impact Gap Year program. So yeah, so my office is normally at Macquarie Park. That's the association shares space with Morling College. which is a fantastic space that we have there. And so, yeah, all the staff are normally gathering in that space, but at the moment a lot of us are working from home It's all the whiz-bang new building, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've we're on the fourth level yet. of that building. I, yeah, I, I remember the old buildings because, we, as I was saying to you off air before, I, we were running a ministry over the road from there. and uh, mm. but, but So very familiar with the old buildings, the old site and so on, but the massive redevelopments. Anyone who knows anything about Macquarie Park, there's a gazillion mm. redevelopments going yes. on <laughs> everywhere that look high-rise and huge, but you've got a yep. whole floor in that new development and uh, seems like yeah. a very smart economic decision on the on the part of the association to, to to go in that way. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't really have much to do with the um, the economic decision process, but um, it is, it's just fantastic that we have the space because obviously we do a lot of partnership with Morlin College. It's where a lot of people are trained um, and equipped to go into ministry. So, um, yeah, it's, it's great from a partnership perspective for us to be close to them. Um, and connected in in that way and it's yeah like we've had the new building and it's great new facilities which is really lovely i'm just looking forward to when we can get back down there all the time when was the last time you're in your office um i've been down once since june oh wow yeah (laughs) yeah yeah so um we just uh onboarded some new staff for the impact team our development coaches um and so we went down for their first sort of day um so that we could all be together face to face um but yeah that was only this week early like, yeah earlier this week um and yeah other than that we have we've been working from home and so it wasn't since. just to get down there and open up a window it's actually <laughs> no. work yeah. Let's 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 cut to a song and we'll come back and we're gonna Oh nice hi guys. You. Hey, you're being nice to you, Sarah. Hey Dave, you wear a few hats, Sarah. You you're sitting in there with yes. the uh the, the Rima board hat at the moment mm. and also uh with the uh, Baptist Association. But the, how's this mm. the local uh youth pastor ministry type thing in the local church to it? That's at Erin, isn't it? Erin the Baptist yes. yeah, you guys are at Yeah, but there. I'm yeah, but I'm not even the youth pastor there. We have our own youth and young adults pastor, Jack yes, Styles. He's fantastic. Um, I just turn up on a Friday night and volunteer as a youth leader. It helps me out. stay connected. Yeah. yeah, it just helps me stay connected to the youth and young adults, um, particularly because a lot of the stuff that we're developing at the association is is specifically for them. Mm. So, yeah, I just I just volunteer on a Friday night, which what, is, which what is a great. Great name for a youth pastor, Pastor Jack Styles. Yeah, it is. I right. know. It is. It is. In fact, I, I want to be cool, Jack Stiles. You should be on the Tonight Show. That's a really cool name. Yeah, hey, great, yeah. Anderson. And, and I guess today, Jack Stiles. Uh, yeah, Jack yeah. Stiles is here. <laughs> wow. he's, a good, he's a great guy. You should get him on one day. Pastor, yeah. Yeah. Pastor Stiles. Yes, we'll get him on one day. <laughs> the style pastor. Come in, got the big fluffy hat on, big tie. Big, big fluffy hats. We were talking about having afros. We should, yes. Yeah, Pete's yeah. been charged with buying three afro yes. uh, wigs for he or mm-hmm. and Evan, which is going to be spectacular. Gonna be fun. It's going to take this program to a whole nother level. Yes. But <laughs> on the way there, we want to talk about this deep dive into what you're doing, Sarah Alicon, which is overseeing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, where is this show gone? Overseeing the Impact Gap Year ministry thing that's now literally big and, and flashy, large sign scale, um, <laughs> capture everyone's attention, let's get into that. Because next year, in, in February next year, you guys are launching a brand new program, yeah? Yeah, yeah, so we're we're launching the Impact Gap Year program um, next year. Well, I mean, we've already launched, but we're taking our first cohort of students yeah. uh, for 2022 next year, which is exciting. So this has been a long time coming, a long time of, of building um, this ministry. And so, yeah, we're actually really excited that it's it's getting to this stage and, um, and we're starting to enroll students into the program for next year, which is very, very cool. 
So that's a, a one year program. So I'm just putting all these little pieces together. I like, yeah. you know, I, I've seen a little bit of your curriculum and I've seen a little bit of what, you know, your structure of how you want to do this and mm-hmm. uh, what you envisage for young people, you know, m- you know, many of which will be coming off the back of, you know, uh, a COVID driven year of final year of schooling in three year 12 mm. and then into life after that kind of space. Um, mm. And I'm thinking, you know, that it'll be an intentional, uh, probably an intense uh, discipleship uh, space. It'll be training, mm. equipping for the works of the ministry. It'll be, you know, a, a deep dive in for young people who are who are you know wanting to wanting to um, give themselves to you know the purpose of God in their lives. And so mm. all of that seems really full on. And at the same time, or running parallel to that, I've, I, in the back of my mind is is good friend to this program, Pastor Craig Corkle mm. at Narara Valley, who's who's going to be merging into a role with the association yeah. in a in a statewide or beyond kind of sphere of influence, and in yeah. and, and what drives him every day of the week is discipleship too. So I'm I'm, mm. I'm just seeing, gee, there's some real intentionality at the moment mm. by by the sound of things with the with the association. Oh, definitely, and um, I think that for us, particularly in the BYM team, as we've kind of grown and and developed the impact program, um, and I'd love to tell you a little bit about like the nuts and bolts of what that looks like. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah, that's where it's come from. It's come from that space. And I love that you mentioned Craig because, yeah, he's coming into the association next year and I'll actually be a part of his team, which is exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, a key space or a key thing that we've really been wrestling with and asking a lot of questions of our youth and our young adults and those who are pastoring and ministering to youth and young adults in the local church, um, we've been asking them, you know, what kind of questions are young people asking at the moment? And coming out of... Um, COVID in particular, um, we know it's just been a really hard time, um, you know, with changes in school, changes in the HSC, changes in work for those who finished school pre-COVID and were expecting, you know, a different university life or a different work life in their in their young adult age. Um, and they've been asking a lot of really big questions, really big questions about, you know, where does God fit in this space? Um, questions about themselves, who they are, what their gifts are, where they could be useful for the kingdom, questions about um, their discipleship relationships, who are the people that are, you know, going to go the long haul with them, questions about where they fit in the long, you know, in the the bigger scheme of church, where do I fit in my local church, but where do I fit in a, you know, in the kingdom? Um, And so those kind of questions that we can see that the young people are wrestling with, that's really the heart of why we wanted to create a program that's a one-year space where they can actually grow and develop. Um, and yeah, so the way that we've kind of done that is we've broken it down into four areas that we can see that um, it's really beneficial for someone in that age range, in that 17 to 21-ish age range, um, four key elements, I guess, that are really important. And that is um, growing in their faith and, and their understanding of, of God, of scripture, um, of um, what the gospel really means for them in their life. Uh, their community, so how are they engaging in their local church, but also how are they engaging in their wider community? How are they engaging in society as a young adult who follows Jesus? Um, In their life, so we're talking like adulting. Adulting is hard. Like learning how to adult is, is, is a complex space. So talking about things like looking at how do I build discernment tools? you know how am i leaning into my discipleship relationships my mentors and and really utilizing that space to discern well for my future um and then also ministry like where might god be calling these young people to serve in the kingdom um are they being called to lead are they being called to mission are they being called to the marketplace as a follower of jesus and so those four areas are kind of that space that we want to give one year to intentionally sow into these youth and young adults um, and give them the space to really explore and answer some of those questions as they go so that's kind of where the i guess the the um, the path that has gotten us to this point of developing this program is and and the stuff that we want to um yeah just really include if that makes sense it totally makes sense and in the yeah. idea is that you're picking up young people on the back of what what we talked about earlier as being a very complex year uh oh, in yeah. anyone's life let yeah. alone a final year of studies life um, oh for sure and uh 
and 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 kind of helping them to to maybe consider a pathway, um, you know, of uh, of at least clarifying what is the purpose of God on my life, mm. uh, you mm-hmm. know, because that's one of the key questions any young per- person is wrestling with, and. Uh, Mm. And really, um, you know, an, an intentional discipleship space with, you know, with peers around that you're doing a journey with in a deep dive plunge into ministry opportunity and so on is, mm. is a great place to be figuring that sort of thing out. Um, mm. Now, one of the things that you mentioned to me before, which I, I absolutely love, is whilst this is a Baptist Association kind of initiative, it's mm-hmm. by no means a Baptist and um, program. It is, is 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 that right? It's it's a it's a yeah. program. You're looking to to engage with any young person really who maybe is a, of a position of faith that that is wondering about my my future and call and and purpose and vocation and so on. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So the way that the program has been developed, it's a partnership program for us. With um, and there's a lot of elements and, and, and space um, for for partnership. And and part of that is about um, who we are as the Baptist Association, also our partnership with Moreland College, because Moreland College will be delivering um, the academic component of uh, of the gap year. Um, but just because we're the Baptist Association and Moreland College um, has its roots within the Baptist history, uh, it's open to any follower of Jesus to come and be a part of, of the program. Um, it's open to any young person from, from any church of any denomination. Um, and it's a space where we really do want to have that kingdom focus um, in terms of the way that we're training and equipping and discipling our young people. So, yeah, definitely um, available to anyone in that age range. One of the one of the pluses that I picked up on in our initial conversations to you, you know, you, you're um, you, you're talking about uh, from any stream of, of the Christian faith. Uh, you know, I mean, Morling is probably uh, a, a something of a world renowned sort of space for training. In, mm. in in many many different denominations, have often gone to you know complement their theological training in 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 that college, uh, mm. and so. Yes, it, it emanates out of a Baptist tradition, but it, it's been for quite a long time a kind of a space where people from any tradition might might uh, enjoy some pretty solid um, teaching, training, preparation, so on. But yeah, um, definitely. the idea that, that the, the way in which a young person might engage in the impact program, uh, mm-hmm. you still have them based in their local church, which is, that's right, mm-hmm. isn't it? And, and I think, yeah. gee, I absolutely love... Uh, the idea of that and how you uh, you know partner with the local church in that context to mm. to to do that. I know some senior leaders in in the body of Christ um, have you know some reservations about parachurch ministries or or whatever who who you know want to help a young person, but all of a sudden that young person has has kind of gone off to you know the next thing mm. and and they're not no longer walking as part of the local body of Christ yeah. and they're somewhere else and and it's like oh. Mm. Gee, that's a that's a you know well as much as you know leaders nowadays typically do want to bless and release and all of that mm. is part of culture. The other thing is is that um, you know you want to know that uh, investment in young people is just going to be uh, able to have some traction in the local church setting as well. So that seems mm. to be part of the, the the framework. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So um, part of the program um, for our students is uh, that we develop a three-way partnership. And so that's a partnership between the impact team, the student or the young person uh, and their local church. Um, And that partnership comes by way of regular relationship and discussion. Um, Our students are all given a development coach. So the impact team have uh, personal coaches who will work alongside those students um, for the whole year um, and who are part of that regular weekly routine. And those development coaches will also have continual uh, communication with the local church pastor. And so, and that's for a few different reasons. Partly it's because we want to bring the whole church along on that journey and seeing what that young person is engaging with and how they're growing and developing. But also it's because um, we've noticed that um, 
that age range of 17 to 21, it's actually a hard kind of season to stay connected to your local church. You've often aged out of youth ministry. Um, some churches have thriving young adults ministries that they can kind of step into, but also some churches don't have a large group of young adults. And, and so it can be hard for a young person to feel connected in a sense of belonging into their local church environment. And so this three-way partnership enables us to actually build in a deeper relationship um, that helps uh, the church see how they can pray for and support and encourage the young person in their church, but also enables the church to actually celebrate um, what's happening in their life and and really know what they're learning about. And so, yeah, there's a partnership in that space, which is fantastic. And it also involves things like the student um serving in an area of ministry and that could be any area in the church from you know production to youth ministry kids ministry serving morning tea um it's not specified but it is an important part of you know um, having them outworking what they're learning within the local church by serving how practical and how useful is that and uh um, you know, I mean, it's, there's a real spiritual formation that goes on in that sort of a process as well. Uh, mm. Absolutely. Regardless of the environment that you're coming from, um, there'll be benefit in that. So mm. the, the, the course curriculum and structure at the moment, um, I've had a little look at mm-hmm. that. Do you want to just speak into that for a moment? Yeah, sure. So, um, so it's a three day a week program. And the way that the program is structured is is that um, it would primarily be at Macquarie Park at the Moreland campus. Um, there would be some elements of that that are from home. Obviously, these days we're all used to doing the home online stuff as well. Um, but yeah, so three days a week from um, from February through to the end of November. Uh, and those three days are made up of um, different blocks of time. So part of the the gap here is that we see the value in growing uh, theological knowledge of our our young adults. And so the gap year is aligned with Moreland College in our partnership. Uh, So they will actually do a diploma of Christian studies uh, through Moreland, which means they get to engage with what Bible college campus life looks like. So they go to classes uh, with all the other Bible college students um, and they get to take some really amazing units, um, including things like evangelism principles, introduction to the New and Old Testament, church history, um, missions, uh, cross-cultural work. So there's so many different elements and that's not even all of them. There's there's eight units of study in total that they get to do. Um, So that equates to about two days of the week roughly and the third day of the week is based in cohort experience time and so that's where all of the gap year students come together uh, with myself and the development coaches and we work through a whole bunch of different um, experiential and developmental uh, elements of the gap year so that's things like um, you know diving into understanding our giftings and how we're we're um we're outworking our giftings. It's things like stewardship. It's things like we're doing mental health first aid. Um, There's a whole bunch of different prayer and reflection pieces that uh, happens in that extra day of the week that's not the academic classroom learning. And that also includes community engagement. Um, So in that extra day is when we'll be doing visitations to all different kinds of ministries from urban ministry, um, care um, and disability ministries, Indigenous ministries, and uh, really giving them um, the chance to be exposed to all different kinds of ways that Jesus is at work in the world. And... Yeah, so that's kind of what it looks like in those three days. Uh, And then the additional element is that we have a mission trip, um, which is fantastic, Mm -hmm. which happens uh, in that June-July period in the middle of the year. So there's some preparation that goes in before and then some debrief of that afterwards. Um, At the moment, um, our current plan for the trip looks like we'll be heading out to Broken Hill. Um, to to gain some experience of what it is to um, be missional with Indigenous communities out there. And we're doing that through a partnership with Global Interaction, um, which have a very rich and long history of doing a cross-cultural mission all around the world. Uh, and so we'll be able to learn from the experts in that space. And so, yeah, so that's kind of like it's three days of the week, but there's a lot of all different interesting things that they're kind of taking part in during that time. Wow. That's real intensive, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. That's impactful. Wow. You're cramming yeah. a lot in three days. 
Yes, yeah. And the aim of that is um, is also that we really want to build a strong sense of cohort. So it's a big experience, mm. but it's a big experience that they'll be able to um, have the tools to develop like the way to reflect on that experience and have it actually really impact who they're going to be as adults and their future oh, yeah, and, no, and what God yeah. might have for them. I, so, yeah, yeah, it's 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 a lot, <laughs> but it's kind of designed to be a lot so that it's oh, a yeah. great no. cohort experience. It's so. a full-on encounter. It is. I, yeah. I can see that. It's more than just, okay, we're going to do a couple of days a week and that's it. Yeah. That's my only gripe about the college system or the tape system out here. Um, mm. I'm used to, you know, five days a week you get in there. You know what I mean? Because it cements mm. in. And, uh, I mean, the idea of college in the U.S., uh, you don't, you get to pick the times that you want to take your courses within a certain, you know, parameter, mm. but you can structure your days around whether or not you want to work or not, whether or not you live in the dorms yeah. or you're off campus, but it's structured. So you're there five days a week. So you actually engage and, and, mm. and, and you get used to that, to that, um, schedule or to that life. So once you embed it, yeah. uh, you get used to it and you get used to the culture of the life and you learn more. You're more comfortable and, and, and mm. you can absorb more. And that's yeah. what you put together. That's what that sounds like to me. I mean, you just not come and we'll see you every other day. It's three days, yeah. but when you're here, we work <laughs> or we engage. Yeah. And that's, I like that. That's nice. Talk about grabbing a guy. Because between that age, uh, that age between you know, once you graduate youth and if there isn't any adult life, it is a struggle. Mm-hmm. It, 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 if, there, if there's no young adult group, it is a struggle. Because where mm-hmm. do you go from youth to adult? Um, it's like no man's land. And you could kind of almost feel out of place. Or what mm-hmm. do I do now? Or where do I find my 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 tribe? Um, yeah. And that's a real crack in the wall where that other dude can sneak in and start dropping some seeds that are harmful. Uh, mm. And between that 17 and 21 year life, I mean, it's real sociable. And the pool of the world is absolutely enormous. The things you see on the billboards, the things you see on TV, the things you hear in conversations, the stuff you see walking to the mall. So you have to make mm. sure that you're anchored to something that is still Christ-centered and Christ-based uh, that still mm. feels familiar to you. So I yeah. don't know if that made any sense or not. But sure did. I, know yeah, what, no. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so. Totally. <laughs> You're oh. totally preaching right here. It's oh, great. Look, you know, I've got one that's approaching. Mine is uh, 16 in January, and mm. you know, we're trying to figure out the right road for him where he wants mm. to go. So, you know, that's a, he, he's still a golly fellow. Um, and I want to keep it that way. So mm. I mean, I'm listening to what you're talking about and it's running through my head. Hmm. Maybe. <laughs> it's got me hooked. Maybe I should send him there. You know, you know. Oh, we would, lo- we would love uh, to have him goodness. when he, yeah. When he's at that age Ooh. and he's keen. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I think question. for us. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Well, in a practical sense, so you, you, the 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 net is cast wide, mm. Um, mm. and and you're across denominations and different streams in, in, and mm-hmm. so on. Uh, there is a three day intensive each week at Morling uh, at mm-hmm. the moment. That's how it's laid out. Um, yeah. Is there capacity for students who may be regional and remote who want to participate? That you know, that is there is there a residential capacity there for them to engage as well? Or uh, you know, from yeah. the central coast, it's just a down the down on the train and back each day sort of thing. But uh, beyond that, the, you can mm. see some real practical challenges for rural uh, or remote um, students who might want to access yeah definitely um so at the moment um the way that we've kind of structured the program yeah it is um there is a need to be at at macquarie park so that we have that relational um cohort together um but we have actually um arranged a bit of a deal with uh the morling residential um that is on campus at at the college Uh, so it's separate to the costing of the program but in addition to the to that uh, there is actually accommodation packages that are available so for someone who wanted to come in from a regional rural area um, there is an accommodation package where they can um, have a studio apartment and they would live in the MRC building, um, which is great on its own because it's a it's filled of um, students of you know either the college or Macquarie Uni, um, and there's a, a strong level of pastoral care 
uh, within the building and the community there as well. Um, so that is definitely an option. And and those kinds of things we would want to take on a case by case basis and really talk to the to the young person and their family um, and talk with their local church as well, because obviously for regional, regional and rural areas, the level of serving they would then be able to do in their local church is different. Mm. Um, but it doesn't mean that it's off the table. Um, we're in the situation where um, we would love to kind of talk with those people in regional and rural areas and um, and see what we can make available for them. Um, right. Sarah Alicon, our guest with us today from the uh, Baptist Association's Impact Gap Year Ministry Program. Sarah, I trust you have the phone app on your phone, do you? The, you do? Oh, I do. No. Now we're going to have to see proof of purchase. Proof. To Let me get the screenshot. <laughs> we're screenshotting phone? everything. <laughs> we're screenshotting proof. I'm actually, I don't even have my phone at oh, my desk. Oh, here we go. Because I didn't want it to beep yeah, during the interview. Have my phone. Have phone, phone random, like, Wait a minute. Her, her phone doesn't vibrate, yeah, apparently. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's one of those Apple it's phones. Like, it doesn't yeah, work. Yeah. 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 We I'm understand. in youth ministry. I don't know where my phone mm, is. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. Whatever. But I do, but I do, and I would encourage people to get the app or listen digitally on rima.cc for sure. And mm. as a board member of Rima, totally give that a plug right now. No, no yes, appeal. that's true. You can't be a board <laughs> member and not have the app. <laughs> hey, but listen, <laughs> and now I think I've just answered my own question. It's like I was going to ask you probably the most important question for this morning, which is how did Pete get a new chair so quickly? But because his <laughs> wife's on the board. Wow. I didn't even know he had a new chair. The that's penny, all I'm going to say. The penny drops. That's all oh my I'm going to say. Goodness, the, the penny I drops. I love of all, all the things there that we've go. talked about. That's the most important question. <laughs> oh, not Jesus, not young people. It's the chair. Well, it's more specifically, how did Pete get a new chair so quickly? <laughs> oh, hang on. I just got a text here from the boss. Hang yeah. on, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> Move on. That's what he wrote. Oh, oh. okay. Wow. <laughs> okay. That's harsh. <laughs> I mean, Sarah brought it up. What nice. <laughs> I did not. No, that's not what he wrote. Oh, you guys. That's not what he wrote, but, you know, he texted me. I got him. I get to make up my own thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you sort out the drama over there. Meanwhile, Sarah, this is this is a spectacular opportunity, what you, 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 you know, you're offering here. Um, I, I, we shared off air yesterday uh, my wife's best, best friend from school that she went to kindy with and just has been lifelong friends mm. with now in a senior role within the Department of Education in the counselling sphere. She was mm. flagging with my wife actually this time round, coming out of a second lockdown into December, January, February of next year. She was saying from a, a mental health perspective um, there are really significant concerns in in the in in um, kind of Department of Education uh, spheres mm. about about the well being of students kind mm. of emerging and then re engaging mm. somehow in in community and society and so on again and mm. and and she was flagging a, a real uh, vulnerability. Now I'm I'm just believing God for you know our young people that there'll be a resilience that they'll be able mm. to mm-hmm. press in and and move onward and upward. I, I'm, mm. I'm believing God for that, uh, but it seems that um, you know the opportunity to consider a, a gap year program uh, that you guys are, are running uh, could be a real lifeline to a lot of young people who who maybe still haven't figured out what am I meant to do you know like what mm. what is the grand purpose of God in my life what are my gift mixes you know these are, mm. are really deep questions that young people have wrestle with and mm. so you know, I, I imagine that right now it's, you know, just coming up towards 11 a.m., you know, on a Friday morning, there's grandparents listening, there's parents listening, there's people in businesses listening who know young people in that cohort of sort of 17 to 21 years of age. Uh, yeah. And, 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 and maybe they're just picking up, you know what? I'd, we'd never considered that. We'd never mm. considered maybe for our, our young person, um, maybe the possibility of, you know, exploring, you know, who they are in God in a missional context where they're going to be trained, equipped and prepared for the works of the ministry. Um, mm. You know, what would you say to those parents, to those grandparents who've got young people in their lives that, you know, they could, they, they're wrestling with that question? What would you say to them? 
Mm. Yeah, so that's a really good question. I think that for for me, the most encouraging thing is that we actually do see parents and grandparents and, and older members of our community who are connected to young people and who are praying for them. Yeah. So the best thing I would say is continue to pray for them. Mm. Um, continue to be people in their lives who are a few steps ahead in terms of life um, that can disciple um, disciple young adults, particularly in this season. Um, but I would also say, yeah, consider a gap year option. Um, it's something that um, enables a young person to to um, not put pause. Like, I think some people traditionally think that having a gap year means that you're going to put pause on making any big decisions and doing anything big and just go and have fun for a year. Mm. Don't get me wrong. The gap year, the impact gap year is going to be really fun. We are doing mm. some really fun stuff. Um, but it's not about that. It's actually about equipping them to yeah to be able to thrive in their adult years not just as a person in community but as a follower of Jesus who's a part of the kingdom and who is serving God in their own way in the way that God has prepared them for and so I would definitely say um, have a conversation. Have a conversation with your young person or your young adult. Ask them what their thoughts or their plans are for next year. Um, make that a space where you can pray with them. And, yeah, certainly direct them towards um, towards our gap year. There's heaps of information um, online. If I'm, I'm allowed to give a bit of a plug for websites and stuff, aren't I? Go for it. Yeah, You're on the so, board. Um, you know what can go wrong. <laughs> Not my fault. <laughs> um, but yeah, they can they can go and check out our website, or or parents, or grandparents, or, or anyone who wants to have a look about the program. If you're a church leader, or a church pastor, and you want to have a look, um, so our website is yourimpact.org.au, and then you can click through to Gap Year in that section. Um, but we also have Instagram, so Instagram is um, Discover Your Impact is our Instagram account, uh, where we post we we'll post lots of photos and fun stuff of the students. Um, and we also have a, a online information session so they can jump online on Zoom, ask any questions of the impact team, hear more details about, you know, the, the nitty gritty parts of the program. Um, and we have one of those every month between now and February next year when the program starts. Um, so our next one is actually on this Saturday. Um, so they can jump online and register and they'll get a Zoom link and it's on this Saturday morning. Um, and they can do that on the website. That's tomorrow. Yes. Wait, it's Friday. Yeah, it's Friday. Yes, it's so tomorrow. Yeah. There you <laughs> go. Well, um, you know what? Yeah, you, you so can they do can... that. There's, there's, there's yeah. a whole bunch of social media stuff, online stuff to be able to connect in with the Impact um, <laughs> Gap Year program. My, my favoured preference would be that you just bombard the Rima um, office here uh, and, and ask <laughs> the office manager. I think so. Um, for, for a link to. Good idea. Yep. Great idea. For sure. Just I call think office here. all on to me. Yeah, call works, call Rima's office that, at ticket. Central Coast. Yeah, definitely. You, that's probably the preferred mm, yeah, route, sure. I'd say. Yeah, do that, yeah. Just start those phones ringing right. now. Yeah, Get on the phone right, right now. now. <laughs> Hey, you know how beautiful though, because I think you touched on something, I, and I I've been listening um, to the the Rima programs this week actually during the day, and there's been such an mm. emphasis on grandparenting and mm. and mm. the influence particularly of that generation on on their grandkids and so on, and, and mm. I think actually there's so many so many saints in the kingdom here on the central coast who, as you rightly point out, have been praying and praying every day mm. for their grandkids and just believing God for great plans and purposes ahead for them and and maybe yeah. this is just one of those moments where you take another step in that influence of as as grandparent to say you know look um you know what are you thinking for next year and you know there's a program mm. that might be a benefit to you and and uh, you know just opening that up and and just seeing where God leads with that because there is plenty mm. of young people who just very determinedly know, you know, the course of, you know, what what, the, what God has for them and they're, they're ready to go into a particular program. But um, mm. uh, this is this is the great discipleship opportunity. And as you rightly said, if Pastor Craig Cook has got anything to do with it next year, then <laughs> there'll be some there'll be some very, very real discipleship formation stuff that's happening all the way through mm. that. Obviously, that's deep in your heart as well, Sarah. And yeah. uh, and that'll set any young person up, regardless of uh, what they imagine for their future, uh, in mm. terms of career prospects and possibilities. To mm. to be properly formed in Christ, you know, gives you the launch pad, as you were saying, into the marketplace, into ministry, into different careers, and so on. That uh, mm. that can be a kingdom influence in mm. the world. Mm. Uh, so last, yeah. last minute here, Sarah. 
can I ask, uh, what would be your prayer for the youth of Central Coast? Mm. Or that, that group um, you're targeting? Yeah, yeah. So for me at the moment, I'm actively praying that young people will know who they are. Um, that they will know their value, that they will know their love and their worth despite HSE exams, despite homeschool, despite, you know, struggling to find a job that fits, all the different things. My prayer is that they will know how loved they are in Jesus uh, and they will know that there's an entire community, entire body of Christ that is just behind them um, and that, yeah, I just pray that they would deeply know the presence of God. Isn't that a beautiful image? There's, mm. the, you know, you might have a praying grandma, you might have a praying mum and dad or, or whatever. Actually, you've got the entire body of Christ just cheering you on and believing you know, that you, you walk into the full destiny that God has written over your life as a young mm. person. What a beautiful... Why don't you just uh, give words to that, that prayer now on behalf of the young people and we'll finish with that prayer. Would you mind, Sarah, praying for us? The I would people? love to. Yeah, I would love Oh, Father, I thank you that you have given us this time and space to have a conversation today um, about the youth and the young adults. Um, Father, I pray right now that if there's any young person who is listening right now, or if there's a family member who has a young person in their house, Lord, I pray that um, this conversation will have planted um, seeds uh, that will be bearing fruit. Lord, we pray that uh, no matter the path that you have for our young people, that they will know that it is a path where they are not alone, mm. that they are with, um, not just with um, a kingdom focused, believing group of people who love and care for them, Father, but they would know uh, your presence so yeah. deeply. Yeah. Holy Spirit, I pray today, would you be with them in their classrooms? Would you be with them as they study? Would you be with them as they work? Uh, would you be with them in their homes? Father, may they deeply feel your presence. Yeah. And I pray, Lord, that this generation will be one who will seek after you, who will hunger after you, God, that they will be equipped for the kingdom, that they will know their gifts and their calling, Father, and that we as the body of Christ will continue to invest in them and disciple them for your glory, Lord. Amen. Amen. Our guest today, Sarah Alicorn. From some place with a big long title, which I don't care. <laughs> so. oh, thank you so much for having me today, guys. It oh. has been so much fun catching up with you. I look forward to when we can actually, you know, connect face to face. Yeah, that'll be good. Be great. Excellent. Everybody have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week, folks. You've been listening to an encore presentation of New Expressions, which can be heard live every Friday morning at 10 a.m. on 94.9 Rima Central Coast.